if you're watching this, I'm already dead. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I've just always wanted to say that. <laughs> no, I'm still alive, hopefully. And if you're watching this, you are too. Here's to the end of the world. It's been five years, two months, one week, and about 17 hours. And if the broadcast were right, then it's safe outside now. Not that there's been a broadcast in... I don't know how long. I'm recording this so you know what happened here. And you'll know that I'm out there. Somewhere. I have a confession. <laughs> I should have never been here. <laughs> Happy accident. Deliveries. Brought me to the right place at the right time. God bless Sainsbury's. <laughs> I could tell you everything that happened that morning. <laughs> Before it all went to shit. God knows I've relived it often enough. I've just done a drop. I'm in my van. Finishing the receipts. It's 10.36. Popmasters on the radio. 3 and 10. Spando Ballet. <laughs> Easy win. So far, so normal. The broadcast cuts out. For a moment, silence. And then the sirens start. You know in the old war movies and you hear the air raid siren and it's almost musical. No, that's not the word, but it's kind of... The point is... It was never scary. The real one fucking was. My brain hasn't processed it before. I'm being dragged out of my van, shoved towards the back of it. This bloke just shouts at me, grab the food. You know, I'm an autopilot. <laughs> Some parts of my brain aren't working as quick as the others, but I just do it. He starts grabbing stuff. He shoves a box into my arms. Come on, he screams. It's the bloke I've just delivered to. Rob, he runs round the back of the house into the garden. The siren's still blaring, but not from just the radio, from all around us. There's a door. He runs through it, I follow. Behind me, a slam. <laughs> metal on metal. Silence again. Time catches up with me. I tried to ask the question but my voice catches in my throat. Rob's doing something. He's working at some computers, twisting dials, trying to find something. And then the floor shakes. Fuck, Rob says. My senses have come back enough to see that there's a window in the door we came through and the light outside has faded. Yeah, it was gorgeous sunshine a minute ago. Rob stumbles back into the room, falls into a chair. I stare at him all the way. At that moment, I realise I'm still holding on to the box of food and a tin of Pringles sits on top. <laughs> I don't even like Pringles. We stay like that for minutes, hours. I don't know. Eventually he speaks. So, he says, looks like you and me will be spending some time together. What's your name, friend? We talked about everything but what had just happened. Football, family, jobs, normal stuff. Eventually he gets to talking about being a survivalist and building a bunker in his backyard. Fucking bunker. 
hoping he'd never have to use it and hearing the sirens and just grabbing me. Not thinking, just doing. <laughs> now, now I'm saying it all to you, I realise how ridiculous it sounds. These survival guys are supposed to be out in the Nevada desert or something, not in Geisley. And definitely not getting a food shop home delivered. <laughs> but there you go. We got along well in the early days. Rob had packed books, DVDs, games, you know, all the entertainment you needed when you're stuck in a metal box underground. <laughs> it was almost pleasant. Till the food began to run out. Not the stuff from Sano's, that was long gone. But the canned stuff, tin stuff that Rob had packed. Problem was he hadn't counted on there being two of us. It rather fucked up his ration planning. We did our best. Stretched stuff out. But hunger's a bitch. It gets to you. Makes the little things seem big. Puts a little itch in your brain. And you know, by this time we'd been in a metal box for four years. Can't remember what started it, but the argument was big, irrational, intense, and eventually, inevitably, physical. I didn't mean to kill him. I just shoved him too hard and his head hit the wall. He was gone before he hit the floor. I wanted to weep. I didn't. Something in me had changed. I don't know what. But I knew that tears were a waste. Whatever the, whatever the world was now, it was time to be practical. So I ate him. I cut him up. I cooked him. I fucking ate him. The guy who saved my life. I never said that to anyone before. It helps. You might be appalled. You might have done worse. I'm not proud of it. I don't feel anything about it really. It solved a ration problem. I guess he saved my life twice. So now you know. What do you reckon? Three Hail Marys and 20 quid in the poor box. <laughs> But here's the thing. If I have to, I'll do it again. Not because I've got a taste for it. It's fucking awful to tell you the truth, but because that's the world now. Survival of the fittest. And I'm going to survive. As soon as I press stop, I'm going to suit up Open that door and see daylight for the first time in forever. Leave this tomb behind me and see what's left of the world. I might visit Skegness, you know. I've never been there. If you found this place, now you know what happened here. And you'll know that I'm out there. Somewhere.